Let's talk copy constructors. You can see here I have a simple cow class that has two ints. Let's define one of these. Cow Betsy. Betsy. I'm going to say Betsy.numstakes. I don't know how many stakes are in a cow. I'm going to guess 100. Uh, and then Betsy.numlegs. Last time I checked, she had four. But maybe we run some kind of weird shop where cows lose their legs, so we need to keep track of the number of legs that they have. Um, Notice I did not define any constructors for the struct slash class. Um, yet I'm able to create one on the stack like so. This actually invokes the parameterless constructor um, when you define an instance in, in memory just like this. And then you can see I don't have a parameterless constructor. And if you recall from the constructors video, the C++ compiler, if you define no constructors, the compiler will create a parameterless one for you. So that's the case here. So I can turn around and say C out Betsy dot numstakes and then we'll put a space there and say Betsy dot num legs like so. Build this, run this, and hopefully the output is nothing surprising. 100 for numstakes and 4 for num legs. Well, there's also another constructor or yeah, yeah, there's also another constructor that the C++ compiler will create for you. Let me show you how it works. I'm going to say cow Georgie, and I'm going to pass Betsy in here. And then let me just copy this line and paste it. Let me just bring this up a little bit. I'm going to paste it right there. But instead of saying Betsy, I'm going to say Georgie. Okay, now, now hopefully the syntax throws you a little bit, because I'm passing a cow to another cow's constructor, but cow has no constructors defined, especially one that doesn't take a cow. So let me build that, run that, pause the video, think, what's the output going to be? Here you go. It's uh, 104. So Georgie got the same values as Betsy, all right? And that's what we call the copy constructor. The compiler generated a constructor for cow that takes a cow and essentially copied all the values from the Betsy instance to the Georgie instance. All right? And all it does is a bitwise copy. If I bring the pin up, when I create, let's see if I can get this thing to work here. Uh, when I create uh, Betsy, it looks like Betsy takes up, why is this not working? Okay, I think I got it now. Um, when I create Betsy, Betsy's just two in, so out in memory, we get, I'm gonna, I'll just drop, draw one on top of each, each other, but we get two ints, and the size of the ints on my platform is four bytes. So just, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna write the bits or the hex in here. Let's just stick with decimal for now. There's a hundred, right, for num stakes, because num stakes is the first field. And then num legs, oops, oops, not num legs. It's the value of num legs for Betsy is, uh, looks like I put a four there. So all the compiler does when I say Georgie and I pass Betsy in there, well, Georgie, he's gonna take up four bytes or eight bytes as well, four bytes per int member. And then the compiler just generates the, the constructor it creates, copies the bits from, from this object over to here. So if I did do a bitwise copy, that's the same as just copying the values, so to say. But, but in this case, since a cow is two ints, there's no harm to it. Where there is harm with copy constructors is when a deep copy is necessary. And generally that's the case with uh, when you have any pointers inside the class, but we'll explore that in a future video.